Look how low this pound is. And I've struggled since I've been at Burkhamsted the water levels. Someone's asked, why do you only more on one side? That's because on the off towpath side, when you're in the country, you can't because there's bushes and stuff. There's a little birdie there. There's bushes and stuff. And in the towns, because the off towpath side's generally kept better, there's no mooring signs anyway. And it's one of those rules that people seem to abide by more than they do tick over speed when they pass you. Although, to be honest, here, I haven't really suffered. People are slower here. Maybe because that's the amount of boats that are knocking about. Sabbatical, good name. The birds tweeting. Squawking. He's working hard, proper blowing it out he is. I can remember doing that when you, you know, when you <gasps> proper blowing it out. Good lad. Colours, misty morning on the towpath. Nice and quiet. Come on, pigeon. It's quite eerie. Another good name. I like names of boats. I wonder if they've got a story behind them. Like mine. spreading their wings in the morning. Mm. Don't know, can't pronounce it. Looks like a Dutch thingy anyway. Dutch boat, Dutch name. Truly scrumptious with the same same colour um, barbecue thingy on the top. Rather novel, rather nice. I just love that boat. I do. Oh, look at that willow. That looks nice. I've come out to take a photo of you, not necessarily to feed you. Look at you all. I've got nothing. What do you reckon? I've got, I've got nothing though. I haven't, honest. A nice quiet morning on the towpath, apart from the geese. They were all in a long line, which is why I wanted to come out here with a camera. And there they've gone.
One, two. Now that is quite a gap. Normally that side's out as well, but it's going out anyway. That's the reason why, is because the bottom of that, those tires, which stopped my boat hitting it, the side of the canal, they used to be underwater, or at least the bottom third were, and now it's dropped. There's a bit of a silt issue there. Brasses are done, and I know when I do the brasses it's going to rain. And I look up above me now, looks like rain. And it was kind of bright when I started off, and now it's not. So, anyway, brasses are done. Occasionally when you walk about, you find almost like a chocolate box road. And there's I'm a, a little terrace of houses, and it's absolutely stunning. I don't know where you park your car, if you have a car. bridal shop and I suppose when you're starting a business it's, it's get about getting the right demographic about doing the right homework price points elasticity of demand all that good business stuff must be very difficult in today's world M and Co closed down clearly but that's a more prominent shop An independent bookseller that has popped up since I've been here in the last two weeks. Nice. Bakery doing some cooking. Ready for today. Early start ish. I don't know what time they normally open. Nice wandering around a town like this early morning. Colton Footwear. Remembering this time of year for the, uh, all those that are served and died. Remember those that have died really, don't we? They gave the ultimate sacrifice. When's all the bakers are open, preparing for today's people that want fresh bread or fresh cakes or whatever people want I don't know lots of little boutique type places that's what I like about this oh I just recognize what's in there actually <laughs> I just saw a shop window yeah. an interesting shop. Everybody's got long necks. Who's got a neck like that? Like that? Oh. So, just done work. <laughs> uh. I've noticed a lot of garden centre type places as that's one. Christmas decorations out and it's early November. I noticed that in B&Q. Massive part of B&Q opened for uh, Christmas decks in November. Nothing like getting in on time. I don't think it'd be long before Christmas stuff is be uh, 
nine months a year instead of ten, and then eight months. Open hairdressers, an unusual name, and it certainly, with the neon lights, drew me towards the shop. Not really something I go to that often, but what is better now is I've lost an awful lot of weight. I was running down the towpath and passed a runner not so long ago. I'm not sure who was shocked. Me, because I was running so quick, or him, because I passed him. <laughs> I've noticed here that there's fewer takeaways. You know, there's, um, like in Uxbridge, full of coffee shops and fooderies. Here is what my class of town used to be like. It's like you've got Howard, kitchens and interiors. Looks very posh. And we've got complete bespoke fitted furniture. Let's have a look in their shop window. Bit minimalist. Well, there's your early morning call. Harley Davidson, I think, or something like that, anyway. the Rex Cinema in Burkhampstead. It's one of those independent cinemas and I have to say it's an absolute find. Now I mentioned before that Burkhampstead is rather like Marlowe or Henley on Thames. Typical the fridge starts up. So this is Berkey on the Grand Union and it's better than Marlow. It's better than Henley. It's got all the boutique type of shops that you would expect in a, let's say, a rather wealthy postcode. I was at the uh, estate agent type places. I think you can pick up a nice two bedroom property for about 450 to 500,000. I had a look on the internet last night and I want to read you the story about the Rex and it's on the website so the Rex has one huge screen set out in a glorious 1938 art deco style with the sharpest film projection and the clearest non-booming sound anywhere in the world now I can't contest to that but Here's the thing that I can contest to because I asked to film in here like yesterday and it does say its seating is big and soft. It is. It has been called luxurious. It is. It is better. It is civilised. It reminds us of what we have long stopped expecting from public buildings. It does all of that. So if they claim to have the huge screen with glorious setup, a sharpest film projection and the non-clearest boomy speakers, I have no reason to doubt them. And they do say that people, there is no dress code here, but people dress up to come to the cinema. 
they call it the pictures. So I thought I'll put my whistle on, or right, my jacket. It is an amazing place, and I'm gonna try and book to come here, but it is very difficult to book. Well, it's easy to book, but it's got a packed crowd all the time. It's brilliant. It reminds me, I don't know how many of you remember this, but Bugsy Malone set out in that 1930s gangster style. It's, it's just, well, what can I say? The seats are comfortable. Exactly what they said on the website. You can sit down here and get, can you get table service? No, you, you can't. You can't get table service, but what you can do is get coffee, cocktails. Can you get cocktails? Drinks? Not really cocktails, but wine spirits, good coffee, soft drinks. We do a cheese board, that's our special, uh, our unique thing. A cheese board. Cheese and wine, and watch the movies. I'm going to come here. And if anyone watching the tube and um, passing through Berkhampstead, this is probably an experience I think we all ought to try. Anyway. Top Gun. Maverick. At the Rex. Burke Hampstead has been a great little town. It's one of those places where it's worth going to see. It's got little boutique shops, it's got coffee shops on the main street, you know, Costa Lotto and the Nero and all that sort of stuff. But it's also got the ind independent coffee shops down the side streets. It's got a, a suit making tailor type place and if you wear suits I don't wear suits anymore but you know it's got those sort of things and and boots and weather stones and and water, water stones or whatever stones they're called bookshops libraries quick fits all those sort of places that normal towns have got but it's well situated it's well appointed Tesco isn't particularly good I don't think. Yes, it has the, the normal Tesco stuff, but it wasn't particularly well stocked and the checkouts didn't really exist. On the other hand, Marks and Spencer Food Hall and Waitrose, very well stocked, very well looked after. Um, worth going to see, worth going to stop, worth going, worth going to. However, the water levels at Burko aren't so good. They could do with dredging a bit, I think. A lot of those places near Burkhamstead could do with dredging. Um, but there we go, the castle. Burkhamstead is a historic market town in Hertfordshire, England, in the Bullburn Valley, 26 miles northwest of London. The town is a civil parish with a town council within the borough of Decorum which is based in the neighbouring large town of Hemel Hempstead. So it's a market town. It has a market on a Saturday. The earliest reference to Burke Hampstead is 790, all those years ago, in the Doomsday Book, in 1086. The most notable event in the town's history occurred in December 1066, after William the Conqueror defeated King Harold's Anglo-Saxon army at the Battle of Hastings. Harold was a guy who was shot in the eye with, a, with a, an arrow, I think. I think that's that fellow, anyway. From 1066 to 1495, Berkhamstead Castle was a favoured residence of royalty and notable historic figures, including Henry II, Edward the Black Prince, Thomas Beckett, and Geoffrey Chaucer. Geoffrey Chaucer of um, Canterbury Tales. In the 13th and 17th century, the town was a wool trading town with a thriving local market, it says here. The oldest known extant jetted timber framed building in Great Britain between 1277 and 1297 survives as a shop in the town's high street. Ooh, I'd like to have seen it. I wonder if I took a photo of that. 
After the castle was abandoned in 1495, the town went into decline, losing its borough status in the second half of the 17th century. The town's literary connections include 17th century hymnist and poet William Cowper, the 18th century writer Maria Edgeworth, and the 20th century novelist Graham Greene, none of which I know anything about. Arts institutions in the town include the Rex, brilliant by the way, must have a go. The Grey Pound um, are well catered for in uh, at the Rex Cinema. I think um, lots of other sort of um, mainstream cinemas ought to do something similar and follow the Rex example as far as I'm concerned anyway. I thought it was very good. Now, clearly the castle had a moat. I don't know when that moat was last moated. Had water in it. I don't think it's a word of moated, but I don't know when it was last had water in it. It's pretty dry now. And, and looking at that, it must have been quite difficult to attack that castle if you wanted to attack it to get hold of Henry II or Edward the Black Prince or anything like that. I think that must have been quite difficult to attack. It seemed to have a gully on one side, then it come up again and then went down into a moat. It might have had two moats, I don't know. I'm just trying to look through here, but it didn't seem to give me any any information on that. If you Wikipede Burkhamsted, I think you'll find it quite a, a good little town. And uh, I enjoyed my time here. Apart, like I said, apart from the fact that um, you're living at a, um, a wonky angle a lot. From this wonky angle, I'm going to move further north and um, head that way for Christmas time. I've got, oh, I've got a uh, Christmas thing to do. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Um, if you don't subscribe, get a, give it a go. It's a little button that you subscribe and then it helps me out. And um, until next time... Ciao, Papa.